Hello everyone, we're doing something a little different today. I know it looks like a pond or a lake because it's so flat right now, but I'm in the ocean. I got one of my saltwater kayaks out and we are going out to catch, well, whatever we can find, black sea bass, scup, everything. I've got a fish finder mounted in the front. This is a Hobie Revolution 13. It's got a pedal drive. And somehow when you push those flipper fins back and forth with your feet, they go left to right underneath the kayak. And there's some principle, forget what it is, Bernoulli effect, Venturi effect, something like that, that propels the kayak forward. Not exactly sure how it works. In the literature it says, the Hobie literature I mean, it says, that it mimics the way a penguin flies through the water or underwater. I don't really see penguins flying through the water like this. But however it works, it definitely works. I'm moving forward and I'm trying to get out into some deeper water. I know you can't really see the fish finder right now, but uh, I'm trying to get out into 20, 25, 30 feet of water see what we can find out there there's a few boats out on the horizon and there's more kayaks there's probably about half a dozen boats and maybe 20 kayaks so it's pretty crowded and what I'm aiming for is just a little bit of a gap because I'm going to be fishing vertically I don't need that much space but I'm trying to you know not not crowd anyone any more than they are already crowded just find a little bit of room to fish in some deeper water. And to start with, I'm going to be fishing with a, a jigging spoon. It's actually a quarter ounce Hopkins jigging spoon. Probably the most classic jigging spoon ever for fresh water and salt water. Catches all kinds of fish. And um, it's a little bit small, a little bit light, but I've got no wind right now. I've pretty much got no tide, I've got no current, and so I've got no drift. So I can get away with some very light lures like an eighth ounce Hopkins or a quarter ounce Hopkins just to see what's down there. And pretty much everything will eat this little spoon. If you just want to go out and have fun with, uh, you know, your wife or kids or girlfriend or whatever, you drop that little spoon over the side, start jigging and you know, 20, 25, 30 feet of water. Probably going to catch some fish pretty quickly. I ran over some fish here. Or actually, I think it was just bait. I wanted to see if I could get some, some fish right underneath the bait, but it's still a little shallow. We're going to keep going. All right, I made it out into some deeper water. It's probably about 25 feet right now. I can't see the fish finder either, so just guessing somewhere around that range. I've got a Tsunami slow pitch rod. I cut the butt section down so it's even shorter. But it's basically a trout rod with a Daiwa Fuego 2500 size reel. And that combo is just a ton of fun to fish with. It's so light, you can jig with it all day. The rod has a really high uh, rating, you know, in terms of, of weight. I think it does a lot better with the lighter stuff than um, the heavier spoons, but I guess you could, in theory, uh, throw some bigger spoons on it. I tend to use it for lighter stuff. And that's the target species, black sea bass. That was only a little guy. Uh, they get much bigger, but it's the water's a little bit cool. We've had uh, persistent northeast winds, east winds, and not too much south and southwest. And so the water temperatures just aren't what they normally are this time of year. It's around Memorial Day weekend. That's why there's so many boats out here. Uh, so we're just going to see what's around. That's the plan. And then adjust from there. So if I, I drop down, I catch, you know, scup and black sea bass, but they're all undersized. That tells me... I need to fish bigger baits and, and forgo some of the little bites that I'm getting and, and fish bigger stuff in hopes of getting some bigger fish. And I'm just trying to get my feel for 
how the fish are set up, what kinds of fish species are around, what size generally are they, and you know, I can make adjustments from there. Once the tide gets going, I can really adjust things and I'll have a better drift and all that good stuff. All right, taking another drop here. I mean, I pretty much started catching fish right away, but unfortunately they were mostly small. But that's okay. Having a nice time just floating around out here, waiting for the tide. It's right after high tide now. If it's low tide, I could go and get some crabs, turn over some rocks and find some Asian shore crabs. Those make good bait too. But the tide uh, didn't allow for that on this trip. Let's see what we got. Species number two. That's a porgy or a scup. He might be barely legal, but you know what? I don't like catching or keeping uh, barely legal fish. I like I like to be sure just by looking at them that they're they're plenty big to keep, and that way I don't get into any trouble if uh, some environmental police officer checks my cooler and the flays are bigger. That's just kind of how I. I do it. I, I kind of eyeball them and then if there's some fish that I want to keep and it looks like it's about the right size, then I'll put them on a board or get my measuring tape out or I have a I have uh, inches marked out on the paddle so I can use the paddle as a measuring device too. The other thing that happens that I've noticed is sometimes you put them in a cooler with ice. I've got a cooler with ice behind me. The fish shrink a little bit. Now, you know, not a ton, but they could shrink a quarter inch over the course of a day. They lose some water weight. Um, and I think just being on ice makes them shrink a little. So, yeah, I don't like keeping fish that are anywhere close to legal. I want to be dead sure, really sure that the fish that are in my cooler are keeper size. I just dropped the fish right there. Sometimes that happens fishing with a all metal spoon. You don't get a hook in them. That's all right. I just keep jigging and leave it down there. Another fish will be along soon. I also put a little Procure Menhaden, a Menhaden or Bunker Scent on there. And I got one. That is the target species. That's a black sea bass. But it looks a little lighter and browner. And that's because it's a female. I let all the female sea bass go so they can spawn and cast their eggs around. The males tend to be bigger, bluer. They have a big knot head on them, at least the, the bigger ones. But I let all the females go, even if they're legal on the measuring tape. I still let him go. All right, still jigging that spoon. Wind's picking up some more. But I still don't have a ton of drift. I don't have a ton of tide, so I'm getting away with that little tiny light spoon. And I'm kind of figuring out what's down there. It's another scup, porgy. If he'll settle down, I'll unhook him and show him to you. Well, he's below my leg right now, trying to stick me with his fins. There he is. Off he goes. That was only a little guy. Sometimes in the spring you get him, you know, as big as a dinner plate. Some nice fillets off of, of a fish like that. You can make fish tacos. You can do them up a lot of different ways. All of them are pretty good. But I kind of like black sea bass better, so that's, that's really what I'm after out here. Still jigging that little Hopkins spoon. Catches everything. The wind's picking up a little bit more. You can see there's a little bit more wave action. I'm having to pedal a little bit to keep the boat in position. 
And I got another fish on. But the time for a fish in a light spoon like this is coming to an end. My window's closing quickly as that wind picks up. It's just going to be harder and harder to fish a little spoon like that without scoping out, having the, the wind and tide pushing the kayak around. But for now, I'm getting away with it. All right, I had to put away the spoon rod. I pulled out a, well, it's a custom rod that I built. Uh, not necessarily for sea bass, but it works pretty well for white. And I've got a half ounce jig head and an old Z-Man jerk shads that I cut the nose off. I used it for bass fishing, freshwater bass fishing. And anyway, when I wear them out, I save them and put them on a jig head and they work great for black sea bass. You saw me put a little scent on there that's Procure Menhaden uh, Super Gel. And now I'm going to be fishing a little bit differently. So instead of catching a lot of fish, getting a lot of bites, but a lot of small fish, I'm going to be fishing the five inch bait and not getting nearly as many bites. But hopefully the bites that I do get will be bigger black sea bass. Scup have a hard time eating a five inch bait. Every once in a while I still catch one of those big dinner plate size uh, scup. On a big jerk shads like this but mostly at this point I'm targeting targeting uh, black sea bass and and other bigger predator fish with bigger mouths and we'll see how it goes and the other reason to switch over is I've got more wind now more tide and more drift and so a half ounce jig head with a soft plastic stays down much better than a little light spoon. And these fish tend to be closer to the bottom. They're not right on the bottom, but a, a couple cranks off the bottom. And I got a black sea bass. He's got a little bit of a knot on his head, but he's uh, really too small. I'm not even going to measure him. I'm just going to let him go. Tangled up my jerk shads, but that bait is very durable. With other soft plastics, I mean, you can use a lot of different things to catch sea bass, but with other soft plastics, they chew them up and rip them up, and then you just waste time uh, replacing them and, and re-rigging, etc. The Z-Man stuff lasts a long time. And like I said, I've already fished that bait for quite a while in the fresh water for freshwater bass, and so this is its second life, and it's still going strong. I've had them uh, rip the tails off before, and then I'll put on a new bait. Uh, bluefish will also cut them up. But for the most part, they're really durable baits. And they just last and last and last. So I like them for this kind of fishing. The other thing is that the scup will tear up plastic baits too without, um, without getting hooked. They'll just shred them. There's a look at my retrieve. It's pretty similar to fishing a spoon. Kind of bouncing it along down there. You can also hold it still and just let it um, kind of swing in the current. And I did get a scup on a 5 inch jerk shad, so that's not easy to do. They're down there messing around with that bait. Alright, I'm going to keep fishing with that jerk shads. That fish hit it when I wasn't doing too much. Sometimes I'll just shake it down there. Sometimes I'll just let it kind of swim in the current. Kind of play around with different retrieves. See what makes sense. See what the fish like. That's another black sea bass. It's not a big one, but we're, we're making progress. The really big ones, they've got a great big mouth and a big knot on their head. Some of them have white tip fins. I thought about measuring that one, but I think we can do better. All right, let's keep fishing. Jigging close to the bottom. I got another one. They're pretty agreeable fish, you know. You, you put something in their face, move it around a little bit. Most of the time they'll eat it. That's another black sea bass. He's right around keeper, 
length, but I think he's a little short. But we're getting there. I'm cutting out the slower parts of this trip. But with a bigger bait, you know, generally you just you're just going to get less bites and you're going to land less fish. And that's what happened on this trip too. But I did catch a bunch of them. Caught a couple female sea bass that I cut out of the footage too. That one's headed in the right direction. Get my net out for him. Let's see. Mouth is a little bigger, not much. The really big ones, you can fit your whole hand in their mouth. He's got a little bit better knot head on him, but eh, I let him go. Hopefully we can do better than that. After every couple fish or so, I'd add a little bit more scent to the bait. The, the Z-Man plastic takes scent pretty well, but eventually it kind of wears off in the ocean. Or I guess fresh water too. But every once in a while I put some more scent on there. And I check my knot and want to, I want to tie a double line knot. And I generally have that knot push back towards the hook. And that helps keep that bait horizontal underneath the boat. If I'm casting and bouncing a, a bait off the, the bottom, it doesn't really matter where the knot is. It'll naturally want to go towards the front of the bait. But when I'm fishing vertically like this, I like to not push back. And that keeps the, the bait horizontal underneath the boat. I feel like it's a more natural presentation and the, the fish seem to dig it. So... I just check that knot every once in a while and add more scent. And if uh, the fishing slows down, I add more scent and keep playing with that knot and eventually I get some more fish. All right, the wind's picking up even more and the tide's trying to go out. So the wind and the tide are uh, pushing against each other, which makes the waves build up higher than they normally would. But that's all right. Just bounce around up here. It'll help my jig in motion. But at a certain point, generally when I start to see white caps, maybe a little bit before then, it's time for me to head home. We're not there yet. The fish tend to like moving water best. So these are the conditions that I want to be fishing in. Making a little progress. You see the blue on his head? That's a male. He's got a little knot. Not much. He's close, but uh, I'm going to let him go. I got into a pod of sea bass right around here. Yeah, right there. Sometimes I, I run over them and the, the fish finders lit up like a Christmas tree. That wasn't the case this year, or on this trip anyway, and it hasn't been like that in, in a few years. Eh, he's alright, but he's, he's a little short. Let's get back down there. I got water all over the camera lens. Just going to have to bear with me for that. I'm going to work on the camera angle for uh, my next salt trip. I need something a little bit higher that doesn't get the salt spray and the, the fish spray. I'm working a little harder just to stay in um, one place. You see me pedaling just to try to stay uh, in deeper water and fight the wind a little bit. The tide's going with me now, so I don't have to fight the tide, just the wind. That one's pulling a little harder. I got the net ready. Not the best landing job, but he ended up in the net, which is the important part. And that might be the one we're looking for. He ate it pretty well. That's how you want him to eat it. Yeah. He's got a little bigger knot on his head. I'm going to put the fish grippers on him so I don't lose him or accidentally drop him overboard. Or let him flop out of the boat. 
And I left my measuring tape somewhere at home. But I remembered my paddle has uh, inches marked out on it. Kind of dark. And I'm looking for looking for the looking for where the ruler is. There it is. Set him up and make sure he's keeper sized. He's 18 inches, just oh, about. Yeah. yeah, a little more than 18 actually. 18. So he's coming home with me. I got a cooler with ice behind me. I used to sometimes hang him over the side on a stringer, but there's more sharks around than there used to be, and I don't do that anymore. I also don't bleed them or gut them on the kayak. I don't want to turn my kayak into a chum slick with sharks around. Uh, I know some people still do, and they, they don't have a problem with it. For me, it's just not worth the risk. I'd rather just put them in a cooler with ice and, and deal with them later. Just my preference on that. I haven't had any trouble with sharks and I'd like to keep it that way. See me adjust the knot, hold the line towards the hook so the knot will, uh, will be closer to the hook instead of in the front of the bait. Add some more scent. Make sure the knot's the way I want it to be. And I'm back to fishing. All right, the wind's picking up even more. See the waves building a little bit more. Now I'm going to give it just a few more minutes and then head for the ramp. I don't want to get caught out here with uh, building seas and wind and all that stuff. Usually in the morning it's a little bit calmer. And then uh, the wind machine tends to kick up in the afternoon. It's pretty late already in the day. Uh, but this is when I had time to fish and so this is when I was out here. I got one keeper black sea bass in the cooler. I let the rest go. There's probably a few other near keepers, but I let them all go. And I didn't get any uh, real big scup. I did get a quick release on a sea robin that looked decent sized for a sea robin. But he was free to go too. Anyway, I had a good time out here. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll list all the gear in the video description just like all my other videos, so you can duplicate what I was doing on your home waters and hopefully have some success there too. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!